Specialist Brock here with another tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is going to be about visual storytelling. So yes, if you are a photographer or you're picking up photography, you are a visual storyteller. I often joke around and say I use photography because I'm not a good speaker. And the photography for me, it allows me to keep my mouth shut, but conveying powerful messages with photography. Now, this doesn't apply just to still photography. It can apply to video too. But let's dive into what makes a good story. So a disclaimer here, uh, just as the great photographer Henri Cartier-Bresson said, there are no new ideas, only new arrangements. Everything that I'm sharing today um, I picked up when I was in school and I also picked up from other mentors that I've had in photography. But without further ado, let's dig into what makes a good story. Typically, visual storytelling is actually is more fluid than anything. However, just for the sake of this tutorial, we will treat this like a formula, a step-by-step. -step. Uh, so, step one would be your vision. Your vision is how you perceive things. Your vision is your ideas and what you want to say. Now, granted, there's been many times I've, I've had to cover stories where I don't want to be there and I don't want to cover this story. However, I have to be there. But if you follow these steps, even if you don't feel strongly about this story, you're still going to be able to tell the story. A mark of a good photographer is a photographer that can tell a good story of images even if it's a mundane story. In order to do that, you can follow the five shot list. The five shot list is the bread and butter of any photojournalist any photographer that covers stories or events or anything like that. And your five shot list is going to consist of your wide shot, your medium shot, your tight shot, your detail, and then just a creative shot. Or as my professor used to say, your wild card. Okay, so your, your wide shot. Um, that is my least favorite shot of all time. <laughs> I, I absolutely hate doing the white shot because oftentimes when you take it, there is nothing typically visually interesting going on during that white shot. Um, from time to time, you'll get lucky, but it just boils down to your white shot is it's setting the stage for your story. All right, so your, your medium shot. Your medium shot is typically um, going to be like one or two people within the frame. Um, some people like to say it's it needs to be like the waist above or whatever, but me personally, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, as long as it's not like a, a one person image. And um, what you want to look for is like emotional interactions like talking between each other and like showing like you know expressions on their face and like good interactions good interactions make for great imagery no matter what the image is uh, so if you can find good interactions you've got a good image alright so your tight images um, that is going to be like a a one person shot and that's usually like the chest up or like lower chest up um, torso I guess you could say uh, of a of a person and I typically look for people with really good facial expressions now granted they may come back at me and say that they look stupid um, but it makes for good images now it's time for your detail shot your detail shot is is an element uh, oftentimes it can be like still life um, or it's like an interaction going on between two people such as this one um, of a spur being 
put on to a, another soldier's boot. It's, it's There's no faces, but there's hands there, so you get the human element there. But it's a nice little detail shot showing you what is going on um, and like you know show you the spur because the whole story was about the spur. So of course I had to have an image of the spur. And so your details matter. Um, you know, the little things count. Then your wild card is whatever you want to make it. Uh, go crazy. Um, and this is the one I typically have fun with. Okay, so now you have your five shot list done. Now you can go crazy. Just go with whatever you want. And so typically when I walk up to a scene, that is exactly how I approach it. I say to myself, get your five shot list, get that taken care of, get that out of the way. So that way, if I have to leave early, I have five images that I can tell a story with. It may be crappy, but at least I can do it. And you never come back empty handed. Then after you get your five shot list, it takes the load off you and you can just focus on visually telling stories how you want to tell stories.